kind of struggled with this a little bit um, in studying this and and trying to to bring it forth into a message. It, it's not really a message tonight, but more of a, a study, more of a something for us to all to look at and to, to look through the pages of God's Word and, and understand maybe just a little bit deeper of what the subject that's on my heart. Um, we're going to start in John chapter 3, and we're going to start in verse 9, um, if you'll turn with me there. Um, this We're going to pick up right after Nicodemus has been questioning Jesus on some certain things. Um, and Nicodemus had asked and about um, different things, and Jesus had just got done explaining to him um, that he had, that we have to be born again um, to to see the kingdom of God. And we're gonna pick up in verse nine and read through the end of or through verse twenty-one. And it says, starting verse nine of chapter three of John, it says, Nicodemus answered and said unto him. How can these things be? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how, ye believe, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man that is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the con condemnation that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth come to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. What's on my heart tonight is belief. Um, we all know John 3.16. Um, probably I venture to say anyone over the age of five or six years old in here and probably even younger than that can stand up here and quote John 3.16 to us. And what was on my heart about that is I got to thinking and meditating on John 3.16. And the promise that is, is given at the end of the verse, but what is it that, that we have to do to get that promise? We have to believe. And what does that mean to believe? Um, I could ask the question and we can, I could give everyone in here a chance tonight to go through and, and try to expand on what they think it b means to believe on Christ or believe in Christ. Um, and it all may be truth, um, but I got to thinking just personally um, as I thought about that verse um, this past week, I couldn't truly tell you what the Word of God said about what it means to believe in Christ. Um, I knew what I thought it meant. I knew what a, a, a surface of understanding, but that just ventured me into a study on belief. Um, and that's basically what I want to share with you tonight. I, I pulled out the concordance and went through and and just started at the beginning of the concordance and, and looked at believe and belief and, and went through. And, and that's basically what I want to do tonight is just go from from the beginning down to through, through the pages of God's Word and read these verses that have belief or belief in them and just be encouraged by them and, and see what the Scripture says 
um, containing belief and belief. Um, so if you'll turn with me um, to 2 Kings, we'll start in, in the beginning of the Bible, and we'll start in 2 Kings in chapter 17. 2 Kings 17 and verse 13. It reads, Let the Lord testify against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I have commanded your fathers, and I have sent you by my servants and the, my servants the prophets. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but harden, harden their necks like to the neck of their fathers, that they did not believe in the Lord their God. And here's the way they didn't believe in the Lord their God. This is, this is examples that the children of Israel done in, in ways that we can, ways that if we look at the converse of, the, of these next things, we can see ways that we can, we can institute in our lives to believe in the Lord our God. It says they rejected his statutes and his covenants that he made with their fathers and his testimonies which they testified against them and they followed vanity and became vain and they went after the heathen that were around about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them they should not do like them and they left their commandments of the Lord their God and made the molten images even two calves and made a grove and worshipped all the host of heaven and served Baal. Like I said, if we look if we look at the converse of that, if we look at, at what the children of Israel done, the examples that they set or that they done, if we look at the converse of what they done, then we can see what we should be doing to believe in Christ. We should we should uphold his statutes. Um, we should remember his covenants that he has made with us and our fathers. We shouldn't look to vanity and become vain. <clears throat> We're to, to fellowship with like-minded people, believers or brethren, um, instead of the world. And it says that they went after the heathen that were around about them. And Brother Josh brought out this morning that we're to build, build those walls around about us that we're not to, that we keep good in and evil out. And we're not to fellowship um, the Bible says to come out from among them and be ye separate. We're to be separate from the heathen. He has set us apart for a holy work that we're not to mix and to mingle. Um, and because once you bring that evil inside, then it 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 pollutes the in, the inner workings of of what you have. It pollutes the good and defiles the good and brings it less valuable. Um, <clears throat> they had other gods before him. Um, and they, when they served, made the molten images of the calves and, and served Baal, they, they put things in, in front of what God would have them to have. So it, uh, moving along to, to Second Chronicles chapter 20. It says here in verse 20 of chapter 20, it says, And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekiah, and they went forth, and Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so you shall prosper. So if we're to believe in the Lord our God, we have to be established. Established in what? Established in the truth of his holy word. We have to be established and listening to what the prophets had said, what he has given us as truth um, in his holy word. Um, we have to be established in God. And then we can believe in God by knowing the truth of God. Um, in Isaiah, if you'll turn with me to Isaiah chapter 43, it says, You are my witnesses, saith the Lord, my servant who I have chosen that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. We're to be witnesses of God. 
as verse 10 says, if we're to believe God, we ought to be servants of God. And we're to know that He is who He is. Um, the Bible says, I am who I am. Um, he is who He is. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And it says that before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. The book of Revelation tells us that He was the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Um, there was no, there was nothing before God, and there's nothing after God. He's forever is, and forever was, and forever is to come. He he is perfect in all ways. Um, he is the statute, and he is what we should live our lives and model our lives after. Going now into the New Testament, we'll start in Matthew, in chapter nine, in verse twenty-seven. It says in Matthew chapter 9 and, and verse 27, it says, And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then he touched their eyes saying according to your faith be it unto you and and their eyes were open and jesus straightly charged them saying see that no man knoweth but they when they were departed spread about, about his fame and the, all the country if we come back up to verse 28 it says and when he came into the house the blind man came into the house and and to him, and Jesus said unto him, Believe ye that I'm able to do this? Do we believe that Jesus is able? Um, is, that's that faith that, that John 3.16 um, is talking about. Believe in Christ. Believe that he is able to do all things that he says he's able to do. He says that the, the scriptures tells us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. If we don't believe that Christ is able to strengthen us then we're not able to do those things either so we have to believe that jesus is able to do the things that we can't seem to fathom and comprehend that he can do chapter 27 of matthew verse 42 he says he saved others himself he cannot save if the if he be the king of Israel, let him come now from down from the cross, and we will believe him. How many times are we much like these chief priests and scribes here when Jesus was on the cross? Um, how many times are we like these chief priests and scribes and say, Jesus, if you only do these things, I'll believe in you. And show me a sign. Um, so many times in the scriptures that, the, the disciples and, and the apostles wanted to see, wanted to see a sign to, to be able to believe Jesus was who he said he was. Um, and many times in my life I do the same thing, um, thinking about just, well, Jesus, if you want me to do this, then, then, then give me a sign to, to be able to do this. When it, and a lot of times it's clearly in the Word of God what we should and shouldn't do. Um, but sometimes we want to, we want to question that. We want to look and and are you really telling me to do this, Jesus? Are you? Are, is this really what you, what you're after? Where if we will study the scriptures and and know what the scripture says and be ready to give account, then we'll know that what <clears throat> what he's there to do, and we won't have to question them in a, in any of that. If you turn in Mark's gospel, chapter 1 of Mark, starting to verse 14, reading 14 and 15, it says, Now after that, John was put into prison, and Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, that the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. So if we're to believe in Jesus, we're to believe the gospel of Jesus. We're to believe... <laughs> The, the word of God we're to believe what he said and what and we're to repent um, to turn away from sin we're to 
to strive to, to leave sin behind, to, to strive to endeavor to, to do the right thing. Um, repent means to totally turn um, and to seek after that sin no more. Chapter 5 of Mark, verse 35. This is, this is the account of, of the Saturian's daughter um, who, who was dead. Um, and he come to Jesus. And in verse 35, Jesus was, he had healed the woman already and touched her, that had touched the, the, his clothing. And he had told her to, to go, starting at verse 35. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue of the centurion, which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest the master any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the words that were spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him save Peter and James, and John and the brother, the brother of James, and he came into the house and the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was coming in, he said unto them, Why well, make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed at him and scorned. And when they had put them all out. He taketh the father and mother and the damsel that were with them and entered into the damsel which was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Telethia Kamiya, which being interpreted, damsel, I say unto you, rise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years. And they were astonished with great astonishment. Jesus tells the ruler of the synagogue in verse 36, Be not afraid, only believe. Um, that's a way that we can believe in Christ, is to be not afraid, to only believe in Christ. A lot of times that's a lot harder than what it is um, it's a lot harder to practice than what it is to say, um, not to be afraid. I mean, we have so much stuff going on out there in, in, in our nation today, that so much turmoil, so much different things going about us that if we concentrated on those things of the world, then we could sit here and, and we could be afraid of what's going on and, and not knowing about tomorrow. But the scripture tells us that we know who holds tomorrow. Um, we can trust in, in Jesus. We can believe in him and know he is the holder of tomorrow. And that we don't have to be afraid of what comes or goes. He says that if he feeds the sparrows, he'll surely feed us. Um, and we don't have to be afraid. We can only believe in Jesus. And just like this man. And then his faith in Jesus is what pushed him and drove him to go back to the house where his daughter was. And Jesus effectively healed his daughter and brought her back to life through his belief in Christ. Going to chapter 9 of Mark and verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thy my unbelief. Concerning a, a man that came to Jesus to, or came to Jesus' disciples first and, and tried to, to get them to, his son was held with a, with a spirit and, and he was trying to, to get them to cast the spirit out and the disciples, they couldn't do it and, and so he went to Jesus and, and tried to, to beg with Jesus to, to cast the, the spirit out of, of him. And Jesus tells him in verse 23, If thou canst believe, and all things are possible to him that believeth. And I'm much like this man. I believe Jesus is who he is, but I have a lot of unbelief also. 
I have a lot of ways that I fail to acknowledge that Jesus is who he says he is. And just like I said a minute ago, he says that he'll feed the sparrows, he'll feed us. A lot of times I have, I have a hard time trusting Jesus to, to take care of that. I try to interject myself into that and try to, and I believe we ought to plan and we ought to, to strive to take care of ourselves. And I don't want to miscommunicate that, that we're just to sit back and, and not do the things. Um, in Israel, Jacob dreamed a dream of seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. Um, there's ways that we can prepare and, and, and listen, to, listen to God and his instructions to be mindful of those things. But we have a lot of unbelief in our hearts. Um, we have a lot of ways that we don't fully trust Jesus to do what he says that he's going to do. Chapter 11 and verse 20. And in the morning, as they passed by and saw the fig tree dried up from the roots, Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree, which thou crudest and withered away. And Jesus said unto him, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and thou cast in the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and you shall have them. Jesus tells us here that those times of unbelief, those times that we have that things seem so great that we can't that we can't do as Josh illustrated this morning that God will fight for us um, he's there to fight for us and in times when I, I think of um, my grandma used to have a, a plaque on on her TV stand up there and it was about a poem about the footprints in the sand um, you know and thinking back and you, it was about a man who looked back and only seen one set of footprints in the sand and the father said to the man those was the times in which I had carried you um, we think a lot of times we're walking alone but it's Jesus who's carrying us and bringing us through those trials and those, and those temptations and he tells us here that if we only believe in our hearts those things that we think are impossible He'll provide a way. He'll move those mountains that we think are impossible. He'll open doors that no man can open. And he can shut doors that no man can shut. Um, go now into John. And if you want to study, study belief and belief, um, believing in God, um, if you'll just read the book of John, it tells us later, and we're going to get to that in a little bit, and that the book of John was actually written so that we might believe and understand more about God. Um, it actually tells us that in the scripture. We'll get to that in a little bit. But we're going to start in chapter 6 and verse 26. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Seek me not, because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled, labor not for the meat which perishes, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. What shall we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God that ye believe on him, and he hath in whom he hath sent. So first of all, if we look at verse 26 and, or verse 27, it tells us not to labor for the meat which perishes, but for the meat that endureth unto everlasting life. We're to labor for Christ. We're to labor to Christ. Um, to, we're to labor in the, the things that are spiritual. Um, it tells us in other scriptures to not put our treasures up where moth and dust can corrupt, but to put our treasures in heaven. 
So it tells us here to, to, to strive for the things of God, to, to strive for what the commandments and what he's commanded us to do, um, and the work of God, to, to labor for the work of God. And in verse 29, it tells us what that work is. It says, this is the work of God, that you believe on him who he hath sent. So we're to believe on Christ. That is the work of God, to believe on Christ and to believe all things that Christ has instituted and commanded us to do. Going to 6, 68 and 69. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? And how, and whom shall we go? Um, they had just asked Jesus, or Jesus had just asked them if they was going to, if, if, many of, if, in verse 66 it says, for many times, for, from that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. And in verse 67 it says, then Jesus said unto the twelve, will you also go away? And then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. We're to, we have, if we're going to believe on Christ, we got to believe that he is the Christ. He is the Son of the living God. Um, there's, we can't believe in, in God and not believe in Jesus. And for God and Jesus and the Spirit are one. We have to believe that he is the son of the living God. We have to believe that Jesus died on the cross and was put in the tomb and raised on the third day and is a living God and he's actively judging and ruling and reigning today. Um, he's not like the other gods of, of this world that you can go and visit their tombs and their, their places where they lay. He is seated on the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for all that will call on him tonight. And and we have to be we have to be like Simon Peter and state and know that he is the one and true and living God. And he is the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Chapter eight and verse thirty. As he spake these words, many believed on him, and then Jesus to the Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then you are my disciple, disciples indeed. <clears throat> it's not a one-time thing and we're done. Um, the Bible says in John 3.16 is where we started, Whosoever believeth in me shall have eternal life. Well, we can't just believe on Christ one time and have eternal life. This is a conditional thing that we can, just much like the kingdom of heaven, is where we can enter into belief and we can have unbelief. Um, there's times where I believe more so in, in Christ than what I, and other times I don't. Um, and that's what that's what Jesus had told these these Jews who believed on Him. He says, "If you continue in My Word, and they had they had continued in in His Word, then you are My disciples indeed." Going back to John 3.16, right before John 3.16, where it talks about Moses in the wilderness picking up the staff or picking up the serpent. If we go back and, and think about that, I meant to illustrate that a little bit earlier. Um, Moses, when he was called on by God, he kept giving reasons that he couldn't do the job that he was called to do. Um, God had told him the first thing that God had told him to take the serpent up by the tail and he said and when he took the serpent up it turned into a staff and he said Did, if, they not, if the children do not believe thy words they shall believe through this and he done two or three other things in succession to that to, to show the children of Israel that he was the man that God had chose, and so just like, just like when we, us ourselves, when we believe on God, we have to take up that serpent, just as Moses did, and and also, but we can't do it just that one time and have it forever. We have to continue in the in His words, and we will be His disciples 
through the deeds that we do as we continue to, to live and to continue to strive to crucify the flesh daily. We go to the 10 and verse 24. Then, then came the Jews around about him saying, How long does, does thou make us doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Then Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not the works that I do in my Father's name, that they bear witness of me. So we have to believe the works that Jesus has done in his name. In verse 26, But ye believe not, because ye are not my sheep, as I have said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So we have to believe the works that Jesus does, and we have to hear the voice of God. We have to hear the voice of Jesus. In verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of the hand of my Father. I and my Father are one. I have many more scriptures. I do want to just turn to John 20 and uh, just emphasize that verse just a little bit. John 20 and 30 and 31. It says, Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are, are written that ye may believe that Jesus is Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye, believing ye might have life through his name. Like I said, if, if you do nothing but study the book of John, it, the book of John is full of, of ways that we need to institute in our lives and to look at and to see examples of what Christ will have us to do to believe in him. Um, and that's all I have tonight. It, it, uh, like I said, it, it, it was a blessing to study it, and it kind of was hard to, to put into words and to, to make it a, a message, but it was, it was beautiful to study and to see and to, to, to think upon different ways that we need to believe in Christ and what we need to do to believe in Christ. Um, I came out with a greater understanding of what it means to believe in Christ, um, more so than what I thought I knew to begin with. Um, and I encourage each and one of us to study it a little bit more and to look at and to see what God tells us about believing in Him. And through believing in Him, we should have life eternal to know Jesus, to know him fully, um, to know his statutes, and to know that he is our God and he is our Savior, and to carry him with us each and every day we live. It's my prayer for Christ's sake. When we walk